Good morning and welcome to worship at St. James on this 21st Sunday after the festival of Pentecost. We continue with our stewardship theme, having gifts that differ, let us use them from Romans the 12th chapter. Today our gospel lesson calls us to be servants and we see how that does not make us fit well in this world. It is appropriate, however, that we are servants as we gather for lasagna later and support our refugees. Let us begin with words of confession and forgiveness printed before you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, whose love is endless. Let us now confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have not strayed. We gaze upon our abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from the justice and oppression. We destroy the earth with our happy and grief. We restore our sin and riches to God. Listen. short of the glory of God by the gift of grace in Christ Jesus. God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all our sins. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit 
be with you all. The first reading is from Isaiah. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried out our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken and struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light he shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The second reading is from Hebrews. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins, as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but it takes only when God by but takes it only when called by God, as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. This is the same text we heard for the festival of St. James. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and asked him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask you. He said to them, What is it that you want me to do for you? They said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you all today. We have arrived at a very significant day in the liturgical church year, or at least at St. James, it is known as St. Lasagna Day, I believe. Well, I do look forward to the meal in a few moments, and for a good cause, and I hope you'll join us. But what if the greeting were different today? Not St. Lasagna, but what if I greeted you today with Happy Easter? Easter in October. You know Easter, new life, new kingdom breaking into an old world. Easter in October, it doesn't quite fit, does it? Or does it fit exactly? Any reading of the Gospels will tell you that Jesus didn't quite fit either into his society. He ran around the countryside with no pension plan, 
with no financial backing, and would go around with no family to speak of, telling folks that they should do strange things like pray for their enemies, that they should worry and care for the poor, even though they had plenty of worries on their own. He told followers that if they wanted to become fully human and fully alive and fully themselves, then they should give to whoever asks, not just their coat, but their shirt as well that they should love their neighbor. Even when society tells them that the way you get ahead is to beat your neighbor at every possible time rather than help them. Jesus didn't quite fit in his world. He said you handle leadership by serving. You handle money by sharing. You handle violence by suffering. And then St. Paul writes later, we have gifts that differ, now let us use them. Perhaps it would have been helpful for us if the next sentence that Paul had written was, but if you do use them, no, you won't fit in society. And frankly, when you think of Jesus, The authorities had enough of him. The religious people feared him, saw him as a threat, as did Rome. And so when they had heard enough, they beat him and spat on him and whipped him and hung him on a cross until his forgiving words could not be heard any longer. And then they said, there, now, finally, it's done. We've shut him up. Now. We can go back to our old pattern. We can go back to our traditional values and hate our neighbor and keep our money and lead by dominating. But then you know the rest of the story. You know that incident that happened in a cemetery on a Sunday morning when the altar guild brought spices to an empty tomb and saw an angel and then bowed before the angel and the angel said, you're looking for the living among the dead? Oh, he's not here. He is risen. Rejoice. Go tell. And we think, did we actually expect him to fit in? To stay dead? There's a new kingdom to live in. A new life to live. And if you live it out, you too will have trouble fitting into society. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is actually the good news today. Last Sunday, one week ago, David Kennedy died at age 82. You know David Kennedy because he is one of the founders of the Portland advertising firm Wyden & Kennedy. He and his partner came up with the, the slogan, Just Do It for Nike. I'm wondering what Jesus would have said if Wyden and Kennedy had gotten a hold of the advertising campaign in his day. What would it be? Easter, don't fit in. That doesn't quite ring true, does it? So what are we to do? Actually, this Sunday, today, is all about you and all about me. And as our Gospel reading tells us, you and I were created to be, here it comes, servants. Do what you are. By following Christ, we get to start living in a new kingdom while we still reside in an old world. And that surely will set us apart. Are we ready for it? Don't be surprised if you are out of step, giving your hard-earned money so that refugees from Afghanistan, who you may never meet, will find a home here in the United States. Don't be surprised if your local neighborhood association thinks you're absolutely crazy for feeding folks on the street who are houseless rather than complaining about them. Don't be surprised if some religious folks think 
that you're a threat because you're not giving in to Christian nationalism where church and state are all merged together into one and here we go onward Christian soldiers. You and I come to offer new gifts in an old world. So what would it look like if we actually do what we are? Might it look a bit like Easter? A bit like new life. Let me offer some illustrations. Terry is 48 years old. He has three grown children from a previous marriage. Anyone who knows Terry says that he's a man with the mission to help people understand themselves. But for most of his life, he didn't use his gifts. Instead, he did what the world told him to do. After high school, he joined the Air Force. His dad wanted him to. He hated it. Then, when he got out, he worked as a truck scale operator because his friend wanted him to. Then he became a bookkeeper at a quarry. Then he worked in the patrol office because it was a stable job and it had a pension. The next nine years, he worked at a bank because his wife wanted him to, first in collections, then as a teller, and then in the loan department. Frustrated, at age 35, Terry sat down with a counselor who asked him one question. What's your idea of the perfect week? He thought. And then he said, to sit and read and write and use what I learned to help other people. Today, that's what Terry does. He reads and writes and gives seminars to business groups and counsels people on career and personal issues. My greatest ability, he says, is being a catalyst for positive change in people's lives. Terry stopped listening to the world. He started listening to the gifts that God had given him. Gifts of a new kingdom. We have gifts that differ. Do what you are. Carol Guthrie lives in Darien, Connecticut, and she too has learned to say no to the world and yes to her gifts. Society told her the corporate fast track was the place to be, so she earned her MBA from Columbia, and she climbed quickly as an account executive at Gray Advertising. It's what she was supposed to do, after all, she was told. A few years later, Carol's second child was born, and on that day, she looked at her finances, and she looked at her busy schedule, and she looked at her future, and she looked in her baby's eyes, and Carol made a decision that her bosses didn't like. She quit. And she spent time with her kids. Two years later, she started her own design company, runs it from her porch in her home as she looks at her garden in the backyard. Last year's revenues were 200000 She loves it. She discovered her gifts. Carol was asked recently about her decision to stay at home. I thought it would hurt me, she said. Instead, it has freed me to do something for which I was suited. Carol stopped listening to the world. She started listening to the gifts that God gave her. Gifts for a new kingdom. We have gifts that differ. Do what you are. And then there's Lawrence and Richard. They could, be, could not be more different than any two people. Lawrence could see in his mind the end result of a project before it was even started. Richard, on the other hand, was mechanically minded. Give him a few wrenches and a piece of wire and he could fix any motor. They were opposites, but they had one thing in common. Both in their 70s and long time retired, the world told them that it was okay to do nothing. But they didn't listen. And so Lawrence and Richard joined to start a new career. They became teachers. Within a few years, they taught hundreds of children, influenced many lives, and were an inspiration to a countless number of kids. Oh, they didn't have any teaching certificates. Never gave a lecture. They became custodians at a Lutheran church camp. 
They taught kids the value of work. They taught by example. And the kids watched them as they performed their work with joy. And it became obvious that Lawrence and Richard worked not for money or for success. They worked because it needed to be done, and doing it made a difference in the world. They worked because they had the gift of health, and working carried its own joy and satisfaction. They worked because using gifts was pleasing to God. To tell you the truth, Lawrence and Richard were too old and crotchety to listen to anybody anyway, especially not to the world. They listened to the gifts God gave them, gifts for a new kingdom. People of God, as we celebrate this stewardship season at St. James and eat some lasagna for a good cause, do what you are. That's our Lord's invitation today from the empty tomb. Break through the restraints of this old world and risk using your gifts for a new kingdom. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Dare not to fit. Do what you are. Oh, and happy Easter. Let us sing together. Before God in prayer. 
Holy One, You call us to do what we are. That is our true gift. Send Your Holy Spirit upon all who follow Your invitation to an Easter life. Lord, in Your mercy. Creating one for the lush and abundant habitat You provide for all Your creatures, we praise You. Provide healing for the earth during this time of climate change and as the nations will soon gather in Scotland. Lord, in Your mercy. Suffering one for all who work toward peace and who lead nations with a servant's heart, we praise You. Bring justice to all who suffer violence, persecution, discrimination, hunger, poverty, and houselessness, and create places for refuge for all people. Especially this day, we think of the Afghan refugee and those fleeing Ethiopia. Lord, in Your mercy. Faithful One, for all who do the work of healing in mind and body and spirit, we praise You. Surround and comfort all who struggle with depression, anxiety, cancer, diabetes, dementia, or any illness, and especially this day we think of Nancy, Bill, Norm, Vicki, Bob, Walt, all those who are healing this day from surgery. Lord, in Your mercy. Risen One, we thank You for those who have shaped Your church and shared Your Gospel. Through the witness of Your saints, we think especially of Joyce and Dennis and Wayne, the brother of Darlene. Continue to inspire us with hope until we all are gathered at your eternal feast. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of peace. here today at 2 o'clock. And then after that, the Jazz Vesper service at 5 and the Artist Reception at 6. I want to say a word of thank you for giving over $16,000 to help settle Afghan refugees. We will continue to support them with the lasagna meal in a few moments, and I thank you in advance for that. Also, I want to thank um, members of the Social Ministry Committee and Charlotte for preparing the meal for us today. Thank you, so many of you, for filling out the yellow card that is in your bulletin today and arrived in your home. Uh, we will bless all those cards on the altar on the last day of this month. If you have not filled out your card, uh, which is your intention for next year and your giving to this ministry, I encourage you to do so and place it in the offering plate. Next Sunday we gather and celebrate the 40th anniversary of our St. James School, the CDC, and we look forward to seeing some of those folks who work here five days a week and do their wonderful work with children. And finally I want to say congratulations to David Rutland who's because he ran the Boston Marathon last uh, Monday, and he's still here. <laughs> Congratulations. I invite you to prepare the elements for the sacrament as we hear the anthem.
in all places offer thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day of King death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending fear. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night of his betrayal, took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. The body of Christ given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in my remembrance. The blood of Christ shed for you.
God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world so you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit abide with you now and forever. Amen. Mm -hmm.